If we look at the disease across the world, the incidence and prevalence is very similar. It's 12% in the United States, 12% in France. Chile is a little low at about 7%, and Italy a little higher at 16% of the population. Now, looking at the rate of diagnosis, there's definitely been an improvement. Back in 1989, only 38% of the patients were diagnosed with migraine. In 1999, this has increased to 48%, but there's still a huge number of patients that are undiagnosed, nearly 15 million migraine sufferers in the United States that have not received a diagnosis. Migraine is much more common than the combined incidence of asthma and diabetes. If we take those two conditions together, they still um, don't yield as many patients as suffer with migraine. So this is a huge medical problem for us, but it is a disease worth diagnosing as there are many treatments that can help these patients and prevent the disability. One of the reasons that migraine frequently gets misdiagnosed is that patients who present with pain in the neck and shoulders are often thought of as having a tension-type headache, when in fact most migraine patients, nearly 75% of them, have pain in the neck and shoulders as part of their migraine. One of the other areas that's frequently confused with migraine is sinus headache. As you can see in this patient, she has pain in her facial areas, pressure-like sensation in her cheeks. She probably has a post-nasal drip, a runny nose, tearing from her eyes, and meets criteria that most patients would think of as a sinus headache. However, she suffers with migraine. Migraine can present with all of those same features that we see in sinusitis. Now, one of the reasons for that is that migraine is a disease of the trigeminal nerve, and that's depicted for you in this slide. And there are three main branches to this nerve that supply the area around the eye, second region around the cheek and uh, nasal passages, and finally, a sensation to the jaw region and around the ear. This nerve ending is super sensitive in migraine and is firing very rapidly. The structures that it supply includes blood vessels, blood vessels on the surface of the brain, blood vessels in the nasal cavity. The nerve ending causes these blood vessels to become dilated and to produce a throbbing sensation. What we're looking at here is a view looking up a patient's nose with a nasal endoscope, a little telescope used to examine the nasal mucosa. This is the same patient, and she's come back in the midst of a headache. The first view is when she doesn't have a headache, and now she's returned having a severe headache. And she has features that are suggestive of sinus problems with a runny nose and pressure in her facial region and her cheeks. What you can see on the slide is the dramatic change in her mucosa. There's now swelling, inflammation, and fluid on the surface of the mucosa. She gets treated with a medication called sumatriptan. The trade name for that is Imitrex. This is a medicine that's specifically designed to work in migraine. And what we see is one hour after she's treated, her nasal mucosa reverts back to normal. The middle picture is depicting migraine. This is not sinusitis, but rather the effects of a migraine headache. The nerve ending, that trigeminal nerve ending, that supplies the blood vessels in the nasal mucosa has caused these blood vessels to become dilated, to swell, and to ooze out fluid. When she gets given the sumatriptan, it causes the blood vessels to shrink down, and it switches off the trigeminal nerve. If we look at the triggers for the trigeminal nerve to start firing rapidly, the, these are listed for you in this slide. They can either be changes internally, such as a change in the hormone levels. Usually this is a falling estrogen level. Stress is a very strong trigger for all types of headache. Sleep deprivation or sleeping in on the weekends can often bring about a migraine attack. Weather changes in, in San Diego we have the condition of Santa Ana winds, hot winds, coming off of the desert, and that will trigger migraines. On the East Coast, the Chinook winds can do a similar thing, where they trigger the migraine attacks. Some patients are very sensitive to alcohol. Usually it's a specific type of alcohol. They might be okay drinking white wine and not red wine. 
And then flickering lights, like you might get off of a computer screen, can often be a trigger. What we're looking at here is a hormone cycle in a patient who suffers with migraine, typically when she menstruates. So on day zero, when she begins to menstruate, she's typically getting a, a migraine attack. The yellow bar shows her normal cycle. Her estrogen level is dropping as she approaches menstruation. And then on day zero, she's developing her headache. The second cycle that she has is treated with estrogen, and that's the blue graph. And what you see on this one is that if you supplement estrogen, you can delay the onset of the headache until day six when the estrogen level again starts to fall. In other words, if we focus on the triggers that patients experience, we can change the pattern of their headaches. So if we could manipulate hormone levels like this, do we have the opportunity to manipulate some of the other triggers? And that's what we'll be looking at during the course of this discussion. Now looking at the uh, trigeminal nerve, you can see here the first portion of it, the uh, first division, the ophthalmic division. This is supplying blood vessels inside the, the head, just on the surface of the brain, underneath the membranes on the very surface of the brain, the meningeal blood vessels are supplied by the trigeminal nerve ending. When this nerve ending is firing and active, it causes chemicals to be released around the blood vessel, and those chemicals will cause the blood vessel to dilate and ooze out fluid. The main chemical involved is called CGRP, calcitonin gene-related peptide. This nerve ending is feeding back into the brain into the brain stem, the lower section of the brain, and into a nucleus called the trigeminal nucleus caudalis. This is a very active area during the migraine attack. If we looked close up at the blood vessels on the surface of the brain, what you'll notice is that there's inflammation. The fluid has leaked out, it has white blood cells in it, and it causes an inflammatory reaction on the surface of the brain. The dilated blood vessel gives a throbbing headache. The inflammation causes pain when the patient moves their head from side to side. In this uh, diagram, we're looking at the branches of the trigeminal nerve and its connections in the brain stem and then proceeding up to the thalamus and the higher centers. The important messages on this slide are that the nerve endings that supply the neck muscles feed into this trigeminal nucleus caudalis. And this is one of the reasons that we get neck pain associated with the migraine attack. We can also see the branch going down towards the nasal mucosa, and that's why we can get sinus symptoms during the course of a migraine. And then the first branch going up internally to supply the blood vessels on the surface of the brain gives us the throbbing headache made worse by head movement. So just focusing on this trigeminal system, we can see all the symptoms of migraine reflected. 